gentlemen this brings us to our very last round of gotta debate them movies um i i'm super ready for it i no, neither one of our contestants are ready for it because this was the one question that I did not give to them in advance to start creating uh, their arguments. So this is going to be completely on the fly. Um, this is an apocalypse question. Now, uh, hold on. I, I uh, uh, let me bring this up because I, I wrote a little. Uh, I wrote a little thing. All right, here we go. Here's the scenario. Earth is about to explode, just like Krypton. You are put on a space vessel with the rest of humanity headed to a new planet to colonize. But there is only enough memory left in the ship's onboard computer system to save one and only one film from the, uh, from the entire pantheon of films of humankind. Which film do you preserve? Now, this is, this is a, a loaded question. I'll give you both a few moments to think of your answer. It's an open-ended question. We're not going to have a <coughs> one or the other. You get to choose your answer. So uh, while you both are uh, thinking of what your answer is going to be, um, let me uh, jump back and do something that we were supposed to do at the very beginning of the show, and I completely forgot. So, ladies and gentlemen, I need to tell you how to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. It's really rather simple. Just go over to YouTube.com and type in Gotta Love Them Movies. Once you're there, you'll see a little red button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Doing so will help me build my subscriber base. But, Mike, why is it so important that you build your subscriber base? This this uh, video, the li this live stream, is live streaming on Facebook. Why do we have to go over to YouTube? Well, I'll tell you this. Once we hit 1,000 subscribers, this show is going to move from Facebook over to YouTube. Once we get to YouTube and I have enough subscribers and I have enough people watching the show, uh, then we can, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Once we have enough uh, subscribers and once we have enough people watching enough content of the show, I can start earning ad revenue. Uh, once I start earning ad revenue, I can make this my full-time job. This can be my everyday life, bringing this show to you guys, talking about all the things that we love in the world, movies and movie news and having debates, got to debate the movies, all of this stuff. Uh, very important, so I really hope that uh, you can support me in that regard. Please go over to the YouTube channel and click subscribe. Anyway, guys, uh, I think we've given both of our contestants enough time to figure out what their apocalypse movie is going to be. I think that's what we're going to call it, the apocalypse movie. You can only save one film from the entire pantheon of, uh, of the history of films that have been made, you know, uh, since what, uh, the late 1800s. Um, well over uh, what a hundred about one hundred and twenty five years worth of film. What one movie do you save for the rest of humanity? Uh, Linda, do you have your movie? I do. Kay, do I do you have your movie. I do. Linda, I do. What movie will you be arguing for today? I will be arguing for I will be Monty, arguing Python for Monty Python, and the, Holy Python and the Holy Grail. That's a good one. Kay, what one movie do you choose to save from humanity, or for humanity, rather? The Great Dictator by the Charlie Great Dictator Chaplin. By Charlie Chaplin. Ooh, two Chaplin. great choices. Two fantastic films, battle head-to-head. -head. Charlie Chaplin's uh, The Great Dictator versus um, uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gotta Debate Them Movies. Uh, based on a coin toss, Linda, you will be heads. Uh, Kay, you will be tails. Let's see who goes first. And it is Linda. Linda got heads. Linda, why is uh, uh, I almost said Charlie in the Chocolate Factory? Why is Monty Python's <laughs> Search for the Holy Grail, or Monty Python and the Holy Grail, rather, why is that a better film than Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator? Well, first off, it's got a very good story um, that it's based on the um, King Arthur, like and the Holy Grail, essentially. Um, but it also has like a lot of different storytelling elements that I think would be important when you're trying to rebuild the film industry, rebuild plays, rebuild theater, essentially. Um, it's got a lot of very funny elements. Um, it's got some great acting. It's got some... Oh, sorry, my upstairs neighbor is kind of moving furniture right now. Oh, but no um, I can't hear it. <laughs> 
Okay, good. Um, it's... I would have said Life of Brian initially, but I feel like because it's kind of based on a fictional story that there's more room for interpretation. So it's going to leave that for people who are going sorry, to initially. Me. Which one are you referring to is having the fictional story? Life of Brian, uh, following the life of uh, Jesus Christ, no, Holy, or uh, Holy, Holy Grail? Grail. Holy okay. Grail is a fictional one. Because King Arthur um, was still, a, a, he was a historic figure. I know, but like. But the story uh, surrounding it. Gotcha. Okay, exactly. I got you. So the story of Camelot, and that just kind of leaves a lot of interpretation. And I feel like ultimately if people are going to study that as a film, that would be the better one. They wouldn't be relying on like historical texts. They wouldn't be relying on historical um, biographies, et cetera. Interesting. So. Excellent. Uh, wonderful point. Kay, um, what makes Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator um, the superior film here? So something we need to keep in mind is Charlie Chaplin produced his own films. He got no money from Hollywood. It was all him making these films, especially during this time when the Office of War Information was in charge of what films made it to screen and what was in the content of those films. And in those films, they had to make sure that everything in it was as America wanted it to be produced. There was one film, um, I don't remember the name of it, but there was a dance in it and a musical number that had um, bayonets being shoved at the screen and they were singing um, Dressed Up to Kill. And the Office of War Information said, we got to scratch that, we can't be the bad guys. So they got rid of the guns and changed it to Dressed Up to Win. This was one of the films that the Office of War Information had no control over and was initially it was, uh, I guess, eventually one of the things that got the ball rolling on getting Charlie Chaplin like kicked out of America. So um, he went out and made this film all on his own, putting his own money and you know, career on the line for not only um, a film with content that the government doesn't want out there, but a talkie. And he up to that point was mostly fa uh, famous and popular for silent films. Plus that iconic final speech from the great dictator, it makes its way around Facebook every few years uh, that of him um, as Adnoid, uh, the man pretending to be Adnoid Hinkle saying he doesn't want to be emperor and that we all need to find the humanity in our hearts is a lesson that is still applicable today in 2020. So that's why I think it's the superior film that I would definitely keep in um if the apocalypse were coming and I could only save one. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a great point. Linda, um, uh, Kay talked about how the meaning of the film still has relevance in 2020. Um, uh, two questions for you. One, why does, um, uh, sorry, my air conditioning just turned off and my uh, attention span got drawn. Uh, why does Monty Python in the Holy Grail have uh, a, a better message than the great dictator, first of all. And second of all, um, what is it about the great dictator that makes it not so great? Okay, so full disclosure, I've only seen a couple of scenes from the great dictator. So I'm just going to say that right at the top. Um, I f feel like Monty Python and the Holy Grail has kind of a more open ending, if that's making if that makes sure. sense, um, the great dictator has kind of like, it's got a clear message. Um, it's got a moral that people are supposed to follow. They're supposed to like Monty Python and the Holy Grail has a message of this is supposed to make you laugh. You're supposed to have this background story that you're following of this historical figure of this literary figure, um, and it's done through a series of sketches. It's done through a series of chapters. And people can decide. And then I feel like if you're going to have that as the only film that has survived an apocalypse, you want to give people the opportunity to learn. You want to give people the opportunity to make more films. Uh, can you delve into the comedy aspect a little bit? Because this is uh, like the second or third time that you've brought it up. What is it about comedy in film? And specifically, we'll talk about uh, the comedy within Holy Grail. Why mm -hmm. is the comedy of Holy Grail more important than the drama of The Great Dic Dictator? I honestly want to say it's because it's more sketch based. So it's done in chapters rather than scenes. Um, the one that I want to draw back to is the, um, the black Knight 
in Money Python mm-hmm. and the Holy Grail. So um, it's it's only a flesh wound, etc. So that could be just one little story, and it could kind of go back to like so. So essentially, <sighs> if if I can kind of Aesop's sum up what fables. you're saying, like yeah. earlier, you said that it was sketch based, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around what you mean by it being sketch based, in that there's each you know, a sketch essentially, or each bit of the movie carries its own moral value within each, exactly, each exactly. component of, yes, yes. of the film. Okay, excellent. Uh, Kay, yep. uh, do you have a rebuttal to this? What is it about the drama of The Great Dictator that makes it superior to the comedy? Of, or, or rather, why is drama in this sense uh, more important maybe. than comedy? I wouldn't say that the drama is more important than the comedy. I would say there's plenty of comedy in this. I mean, it's Charlie Chaplin. Uh, his physical comedy paved the way for people like Mon- like groups like Monty Python and comedians today to do what they do. So that's why I would argue that it's more iconic and more important to keep. But it's hard to say if, if um, comedy is more important than drama. However, um, the, there's a dance in this called the Globe Dance that is an iconic dance and very, very funny. I think that that might have uh, I think that has just as much sticking power as the comedy that is in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's just delivered in a more I don't want to say diverse, but a more like a more diverse uh, universe because it's mixed in with drama. It's mixed in with intrigue. So it's not just funny all the time. There's some funny along with the rest of the stuff. Um, I would also argue that even if it were a case of like, which is more important drama or funny, um, this, in this has it all, this has everything that you would want as far as like a little bit of comedy, a little bit of drama. Um, and of course, like I mentioned that sticking power of the lessons from it that can apply to our daily lives, to cinema today, um, when it comes to censorship, there's a lot of reasons why I would say that that one, this one is superior. Uh, Linda, closing arguments. Uh, Kay brought up uh, censorship within film and cinema and how uh, the great dictator and Charlie Chaplin himself paved the way to create other great comedians uh, like Monty Python and in other uh, comedians mm-hmm. that made films in this regard. What is it about um, uh, John Cleese and Eric Idle and uh, 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 Graham Chapman and all the rest of them that made this film superior, not just in comedy, but in drama as well? Um, I feel like because it was based on a mostly fictional character that kind of led for less censorship, if that makes sense. And it would just mean that people were able to watch this film. They were able to relate to it more. Um, so I haven't seen the great dictator. I've only seen bits and pieces of it, but I know what it's parodying. I know who the figures are. I know Charlie Chaplin's like, history pretty much um but i feel like this would be something that people could relate to if they wanted to even though like it's the apocalypse and we only had one film like in the database they could go back into records and they could ultimately build upon that so it's not necessarily comedy versus drama it's kind of like relatability the more that i think about it Uh, it. okay final thoughts what is it about the relatability to uh to this uh subject matter of uh, uh of like a 1970s comedy or i guess the 1980s early 80s comedy of uh, uh monty python as opposed to the great dictator i think it's also incredibly relatable so the main characters uh the main character is a veteran who is suffering from ptsd and has memory loss and that's something that we see all the time in our society with people around us of have of sufferings from PTSD. Um, and that's very relatable for a lot of uh, military people, but also, you know, non-military individuals, I have PTSD as well. So I would say that's really relatable to be able to see that kind of representation from a film from the forties when that wasn't even a thing yet, but that's very clearly what's happening with this character. Also um, just look around at our world right now. There's a lot of strife. There's a lot of bad things happening and that can be easily related to the stories and the lessons from this film. And like I said, that last speech where he comes together and says, I don't want to be an emperor. I just want everyone to be kind. I want us all to unite and, you know, have peace. 
that would be really nice right now. <laughs> oh man, you guys, this is like, these are two excellent arguments. All the points that both of you brought are incredibly strong. Uh, you laid out your cases. You made very good, uh, uh, like I said, cases as to why each of these films are superior than the other and what it is that we learn from them. Oh man, so man, Linda, you were the first one to bring up relatability. <laughs> And that, like, that was that was a one-two punch that I was like, oh, wow, I, I didn't think about that. But it's true. There's a lot of re relatability. And as well, you brought up a really interesting point uh, about, like, how the film is more sketch-based in that we have, like, little vignettes. And as we go through each vignette of the story, because all the vignettes together create this big, long narrative, uh, when you tie them all together, or not even when you tie them all together, when you break them down, uh, each vignette has its own morality tale to it. Um, like the, uh, you didn't mention this, but, you know, Sir Robin uh, seeing, like, the three-headed uh, monster or whatever. Um, uh, you know, the, the knights who fight me with their shrubberies. Um, the, you know, the <laughs> castle of the women trying to seduce the men. Uh, like, each segment of the movie has its own very strong morality tale um and you know it's obviously it's it's comedically based um and you know it's all done very tongue-in-cheek but there's a very strong point to each one now Kay, on to your credit um you came right out of the bat and saying like well, first of all you gave us the the background as to why the film exists and the hardships that it had when it was being created um uh, you were talking about how uh, how important this film is in terms of relatability to 2020 and how important it is and how like we can still learn lessons from it. Uh, and there's there's a lot about that movie that reflects the current culture and climate of today. So you Unfortunately. Right? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I gotta watch, I gotta watch it. it. It's so good. It's so good. You're, you're not gonna say it. It's fantastic. I've literally, I've literally only seen, only like, seen like bits and pieces, bits and pieces of, it. of it. So, like, so, the, final like the final speech, speech and then maybe, maybe, like, maybe one, like bit, one bit in the middle. See, I can't. See, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, even <laughs> Kay, when you were talking about, like, uh, because I had, as you were talking, giving your argument, I forgot that this was a comedy. Like, it very much is a drama, but it's also very much a comedy. Uh, until you brought that point mm -hmm. up, I just totally forgot. Uh, that it's both a drama making very strong poignant commentary to the world that we live in today as well as giving us reasons to laugh um, so yeah both of these arguments very 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 strong it's hard to pick one uh, but if I'm leaning in one direction as opposed to the other K I'm leaning in your direction Linda my apologies uh, like no you worry no worry this was, this, was hard, this was a hard one to judge uh, because both of your arguments were very strong uh, you made very great points for both um, but yeah at, at the end of the day Kay I think that uh... Linda you did so good and I literally did my senior thesis on this movie <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry <laughs> So I know much so about, much about this film, this film and you did so, so good. So good. <laughs> you, oh, you did. Oh, man. Well done. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kay, you are our official winner here uh, for, uh, for oh, God of the Movies. Uh, God of Debate the Movies. Uh, if you are able and willing, I'd love to have you back next week. Uh, hope that we can get our video uh, situations figured <laughs> out. Um and all the rest of it. Don't forget, don't forget I've watched, I've watched horror, movies. horror movies. So, so yeah, people, yeah, people who watch horror movies. I, I threw them in there specifically. I wanted to like switch the genre up. We did two questions about superheroes. Uh, you know, it's like everything is a little you know frilly and made up. Let, let's do something completely different and off the mark. You know, uh, let's see how well you fare when you're not familiar with the subject matter. You know, which which I, we, I, I, which I we worry, worry. Worry. <laughs> Anyway, guys, uh, what do you think? Do you agree with my final rulings uh, that Kay delivered the, the better argument in this last round? Or do you feel that Monty Python and the Holy Grail, uh, as delivered by Linda Moulton, had the stronger argument? Jump down to the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. All right.